Hey there folks, I'm Mark, with an affiliation with Spectrum Pulse, and yeah, this week's a mess, let's get into it, and this, it's Billboard Breakdown. So this is later than it frankly should be, especially on a week where there's no holiday to speak of to drive any sort of delay. And unfortunately, it's one of those cases where I don't have an easy answer for any of this either. Because Billboard, in their infinite wisdom, is simply citing processing issues as to why the charts dropped 36 hours late. And that doesn't do much for any of their credibility here which has a knock-on effect on mine. Now, my initial thoughts were around the top 10, specifically the new number one, we'll get to it, but I reckon it's likely more tied to the Billboard 200 and the sales metrics between the other two big stories of this week, in the Barbie soundtrack versus the New Jeans EP, which impacts a lot of the positioning on the Hot 100. Either way, this is probably dropping on Thursday evening, probably being edited in a rush and uploaded from a hotel room as I'm in transit to a music festival, as long as there's not thunderstorms that interfere with my flights, and I hope y'all are a little bit more forgiving if this comes across a bit hasty. But part of this is absolutely not wanting to discuss our new number one, Try That in a Small Town by Jason Aldean, his first ever number one on the Hot 100. And I've said my lengthy piece on it last week, that was some fun comments to sift through, let me tell you. And while it rules sales, what's actually kind of disconcerting is the sheer number of streams it's getting as well, even enough for someone on Nashville radio to try giving it another chance. I do not expect it's going to hold the number one because Travis Scott and Post Malone are going to bulldoze the Hot 100 next week, but it did get there, and America has to reckon with all of that. Hell, it overtook Last Night by Morgan Wallen at number two, which might have better streams but cannot match the sales, and the radio seems like it's peaked near the very top. I would say this opens up a door for Fast Car by Luke Combs at number three. That's right, the first time in Hot 100 history the top three three are all country songs. What even is 2023? But while the radio is still moving, the dips on streaming and sales kind of concerning. And right behind them is Fuck You Mean by Gunna at number four, which is here predominantly on streaming with the radio only tentatively touching it. And I just gotta laugh because this is just getting ridiculous. What is this year? I mean, it gets a little bit more stable with Calm Down by Rima and Selena Gomez at number five. The radio is starting to slip, but it's got such a margin there that the descent's probably gonna be pretty slow. And then rising up two spots, we got Cruel Summer by Taylor Swift at number six, which didn't exactly have a great streaming week, but the radio is really behind this. Then we got a debut in the top 10, K-Pop by Travis Scott, Bad Bunny, and The Weeknd at number seven. We'll get into the song later on, but the fact that it broke this high is probably indicative of what's coming, especially if the radio is as quick to get on board to push this along with good sales and streams. Then we get a return to the top 10 with Barbie World by Nicki Minaj, Ice Spice, and Aqua at number 8, predominantly here on sales and streaming, but slightly more radio than you might think. And it ended all off two songs that were handily knocked back, with Seven by Jungkook and Lotto at number 9, falling off the top spot because while the sales were indeed great, the streaming evaporated and Vampire by Olivia Rodrigo, which has got a lot of radio, but is not seeing that much traction anywhere else, especially in sales. Now that naturally takes us to our losers and dropouts. And given that this might be the closest thing to a normal week that we've had in some time, it's actually pretty reasonable. In the latter category, we finally got rid of a couple Morgan Wallen songs with You Proof handily getting its year-end list spot for 2023, and Cowgirls with Ernest handily missing it. It. And our list of losers, it's really thin. A couple continued losses for Taylor Swift's Speak Now album bomb with I Can See You at 45 and Enchanted at 89. Lil Uzi Vert seeing a dip for Flood of the Face at 80. And unfortunate losses off the debut for Rush by Troy Sivan at 88. And S91 by Carol G at 98. Kind of a shame, I like both those last two. Now the returns and gains are also pretty stable, and I gotta say, there is more here that I like than I expected. Hell, the one return we got is Oklahoma Smoke Show by Zach Bryan finally getting a little bit of virality at 90. That is a huge, long overdue win. As for the gains, 
Well, I already mentioned Barbie World, but we saw the impact of that soundtrack with Dance the Night by Dua Lipa up to number 12, and What Was I Made For by Billie Eilish off the debut last week to 18. But New Jeans was hot on their tails, with Super Shy going up to 48. Hell, the only gain I don't really care for is Jaded by Miley Cyrus up to 78, because apparently the radio is finally sticking. But the gain I really want to talk about is Dial Drunk by Noah Kahn at 25. The streams are up big. The radio is getting on board. The Post Malone remix is well-timed, really good. Hopefully will not get cannibalized by the album. It'll fall back next week. I shouldn't have hope, but I kind of do. Let's make this happen. But where this week gets a lot longer is in our considerable list of new arrivals. And we gotta start off with number 100, Equal Dirt by Rilo Rodriguez. Okay, I guess I'm a little bit surprised we're getting a second Rilo Rodriguez song after last week's thing. Maybe he's got more of a following than I fully grasp. So with this, look, I gotta be honest, his vocal production is still actively distracting. It sounds like an even more nasal blend of Future and Lil Baby, where the warbling slur against the Chipmunk Luther Ingram sample and the dry trap percussion, it's considerably more difficult to discern than it probably should be. Granted, a lot of the writing really does not help. The back and forth in the relationship where it seems like she got an abortion, but then they both continue to openly cheat on each other, but now he's supposedly past it, and they're not really a couple, except on the hook, where it's more of a profession of love, where he seems to know that he's getting screwed with her screwing around, and he's also screwing around, later echoed by someone then taking the stand against him. Look, I don't know. I think I'd buy more to him being this sad sack if he wasn't such a petty asshole everywhere else on this track. It's sour in a really unpleasant way. So while I was just kind of confused by this guy last Last week, this I do not like at all. Next, number 99, Taliban's by Byron Messia. Okay, this might require a bit to explain. Given the song's got that title, I would imagine so. Okay, so Byron Messi is from the Caribbean. He's predominantly worked in dance hall, but this song trends more towards Afrobeat, and thus he's blown up to a point where he got a very big remix with Burna Boy that's not credited on the Hot 100. And on the surface, I kind of get why this got big. His crooning against the spare clatter of percussion and the gentle melody actually creates a really strong hook, even if you might not catch everything in his patois on first listen. And that might be a good thing, because, whoo boy, there are some wild lines here. Now, on the surface, it's a lot of posturing and threats with some edgy comparisons to the Taliban rather than showing any sort of allegiance. I mean, otherwise, he is not getting away with a line comparing his crew to being bomb-like Islam. But there's also some odd lines across this that feel like they're trying to go for global references, but are just kind of awkward, especially with such gentle delivery. And paradoxically, that actually creates some tangible menace. I kind of buy it. I might as well speak on the Burna Boy remix. He brings a little bit more of a forceful presence, and a few of the references hit a little bit better, but his flow in the final verse gets kind of jerky, and he and Byron Messia have no real interplay, and I think that's a real missed opportunity. Overall, you know, I think I kind of like this. It's got a darker, tropical sound. I think that can work. I just hesitate to call it great. That's all. Number 93, Cool With You by New Jeans. So I didn't say New Jeans got an album bomb this week, because technically they didn't under my rules, and really it was just an EP that got released and ran up the sales charts. So there's only two new songs to deal with. This is the first one, and while with Super Shy, I did the very obvious Pink Pantherist comparison, I'm also starting to think that with New Jeans with this UK garage style with the clattering groove, the spare melody bouncing off the hollowed bass, and a lot of their cooing vocals, that just might be their thing here. And I honestly think it works quite well for the soft focus love that they show, where the quiet inevitability and the subtle tension really comes through quite well. Even if I will say that the abbreviated song structure running just over two minutes doesn't really give this as much space to breathe as it really could have used. But you know what, honestly, this is quite likable. Not sure it's super sticky, but I can appreciate this. Good stuff. Check it out. Number 92, But I Got a Beer in My Hand by Luke Bryan. Wasn't even gonna try, but I got a beer in my hand. 
So here's where I have to tell you that Luke Bryan's not put out an album proper since 2020. And yet it hasn't felt like he's gone away. He's had charting singles that have had a run the past couple of years. Even just showing up with Jordan Davis on Buy Dirt, which actually did really well. But this seems like the first song in a while that might be preceding a proper solo album. And you know what? Even if Luke Bryan's got a pretty solid voice and there's a lot more twang to go along with some live drums that eventually take over from that very canned clap, this entire song feels over-processed and once again lets the cymbals sound way louder than any sort of groove. And it's also the sort of bro country song that's upbeat, I'm generally inclined to like it, but also feels so dated, especially with Luke Bryan's clunky flows and passing references to getting past a breakup that's got no tangible weight to it, especially as he references trying to write songs with a lot of whiskey, and I know for a fact that he's only going to have a couple credits at most on any given album. He doesn't have any credits on this song. I mean, if I had my way, there'd be any number of Jake Owen songs and Luke Bryan instead here that do the exact same thing, but considerably better. This is just flimsy. But you know what surprisingly isn't? Number 87, I'm Just Ken by Ryan Gosling. What will it take for her to see the man behind the tent and fight for me? So here's something that's modestly funny. I actually saw some folks a little bit surprised that this was Ryan Gosling's first appearance on the Hot 100. I don't know why some folks acted like anything from La La Land was gonna wind up here. And you know what, that's probably the first time you thought about that movie in years. Anyway, this is one of the big show-stopping numbers in Barbie. And in my opinion, one of the emotional centerpieces of the film that gets into Ken's complicated emotional arc of trying to contextualize his feelings and his ego that might not be reciprocated or just discarded, which obscures the very real feelings he's now struggling with to feel enough for himself. I mean, that's the side of patriarchy that doesn't get the same attention. In addressing the work that men should do to make ourselves feel better beyond just preening dominance or demanding it from someone else. And so naturally, it takes the form of a smoldering throwback 80s hard rock song with the strings and the synth strings that spring right into outright cheese that still has some real emotional weight because Mark Ronson on production is working his ass off to make this somewhat presentable. And that kind of comes down to Ryan Gosling. I, he's not a terrible singer, and the fact that he really cannot sell this genre power ballad, it kind of works for the song's thematic credit, but that also makes it feel like more of a soundtrack novelty than a cut that can really stand on its own. Now, it's a novelty I like, but it definitely gets more in the context of the film, especially with the dance number, than on its own. All I'm saying, although it is still good, I'll check it out. Number 81, ETA by New Jeans. What's your ETA? What's your ETA? What's your ETA? What's your ETA? Well, uh, this is a swerve away from UK Garage, I can say that. Well, I say that, but the underlying sandy shuffle of percussion isn't that far removed. I think I'm just a lot more distracted by that flat and painfully processed horn that's got no body but squawks all over the goddamn mix and doesn't match with any of the girls' soft-spoken cooing here, defaulting to a lot of old K-pop impulses of blaring annoying klaxons to beat you over the head rather than having more of a tune. Now, granted, I could be missing something in the translation, this feels more like a girl solidarity song. Dump the guy, beware if he's being manipulative, what's your ETA to hook up? Obviously it's not targeted at me, but I also feel like it could have had a little bit more groove or punch. This comes across as really clunky to me. So no, I can't really endorse it. Next, number 73, Speed Drive by Charlie XCX. Of the Barbie songs to hit the Hot 100, I am happy that Charlie XCX was one of them that got through. The labels perpetually failed to give her brand of hyperpop any sort of chart traction since her breakthrough nearly a decade ago. So even if this is probably going to only last a week, I do appreciate that she showed up. And this kind of hits that spot between where her blown out hyperpop is and something a little bit more bubblegum and accessible. Sampling Hey Mickey by Tony Basil will do that for you. And the lyrics fit very cleanly into that plastic 
stylized flex that feels completely unironic and ridiculously catchy, even if the song actually runs under two minutes. Honestly, kind of hard to find much to say about this. It feels more like a quick interlude than a fully fleshed out song with something much more individual stang power. It's generally good for it, just probably won't do much for me. All I'm saying. Number 64, Heartbroken by Diplo, Jesse Murph, and Polo G. Okay, look, I get why Polo G is hopping on the pop crossover singles. It's the brown bag money, easy paycheck between albums. But can he at least pick better collaborators? Diplo hasn't been good in years, and I thought the Jesse Murph experiment failed pretty definitively last year. Why are we doing this? The big problem here is that nobody compliments each other on this song, or really sound like they want to be here at all, in between Jesse Murph's twangy BB Rexa impression and Polo G sounding more checked out than ever which is not a good fit for a song that's trying to showcase the feeling of finding love post heartbreak with a new partner. It wants to try and convince you that a new day is here, a new day has come, but everyone's also sullen. They're still wallowing in the past. I'm not buying it. And okay, building off the brittle acoustics and whatever warbles Diplo put in the background, that might have worked if the song could build to a really powerful climax or drop. Jesse Murph, she probably has the pipes to get there, but then Diplo puts in this squirty fart of a post-chorus drop that feels both dated and fractures any climax by repeating that word broken so much. Oh look, this feels crappy in a very non-specific, rather boring way. Can we just get a new Polo G album instead of this? Please? Number 41, Deli by Ice Spice. He like him already. He want the wop, but I just want the fatty. And I'm back in his partner, I'm petty. So when I covered Ice Spice's EP very early this year, I did not expect she would become one of the main characters that has shown up all over 2023's pop charts, where the hype actually seems to have stuck around a little bit. But here we are, one of the biggest debuts of the week coming off that expanded deluxe issue of said EP. I was at least somewhat curious to check this out. And you know, I can see why hypothetically this could have worked with a crunchy jersey club pulse that drives the spare percussion and the echoing melody and you can tell that ice spice is at least trying to show more emotion or intensity in her delivery but man she's not very good at it there's a flatness to her delivery that lacks a lot of the icy veneer that would give her some power then there's the lyrics I get this is trying to be very obviously ridiculous with her shaking her ass at the deli. Not sure that's the cold cuts that folks are looking for. Insert all manner of meat puns here, which in and itself can be a pun. But then you get the line, I'm the shit, I'm Miss Poopy. I, I check out, I'm sorry. It's not like the rest of her flexing on men or women here is that convincing. A song like this gives me the impression that someone at her label probably told her that her runway is very limited in rap given her skill set. This is her attempt to try and do more as much as I like the groove, it doesn't work for me. Pass. Number 31, White Horse by Chris Stapleton. I get the impression that the next Chris Stapleton album is going to have a much bigger impact on the Hot 100 than many will anticipate. I mean, he's had multiple charting hits now for years. The sound in country is pivoting in his direction. Streaming is already on board. He could be in for something really special. And thus with this... Once again, produced with Dave Cobb, but now with a co-write from the veteran songwriter Dan Wilson. God damn, this might be the heaviest song that Chris Stapleton has ever shipped. It's got some real southern rock muscle to it with those drums, that bass line, and the organ subtly flushing out that choppy western snarl in the electric and acoustic guitars. Especially with Chris Stapleton just hollering, he's got real firepower. Now, lyrically, he's very much in his comfort zone. This is the sort of rugged cowboy song where if this woman wants him to be that guy coming in on the white horse he ain't quite there yet he's still living that hard life but you'll probably get there but this track has that rolling adventurous spirit that is so damn enticing it makes you want to believe him and that's before he rips open the short little guitar solos it almost feels like something that was ripped straight out of the 70s and i mean that as high praise so it might not be remotely surprising when i say that yeah i really like this but when it kicks this much ass i can't complain great song I'm excited. And finally, number seven, K-pop by Travis Scott, 
Bad Bunny and The Weeknd. We have to end with this. Really? The most flagrantly obvious commercial single move on all of Utopia derived from Kanye's leftovers with a title that's built for the algorithm and the biggest name guest stars for the crossover with a Brazilian funk groove that seems built for the mistaken Afrobeat crossover that initially I kind of liked because of the swell and scope of the mix before you realize how blown out some of the mastering is, especially around Travis's vocals. It just feels so obvious. That doesn't have to be a bad thing if there's a strong hook or chemistry or a cool lyrical idea idea at least some groove but we might get one out of the four here because the hook is utterly forgettable there's little to no good interplay and while the horn dog beach party hookup doesn't need to have good lyrics it's the weekend who's the letdown here yeah k-pop can be a cute little ketamine reference but then you have the closing lines in this verse even though she korean get her wet like tsunami come on man you're better than that i mean a lot of the fans of utopia don't even like this song it feels like it was drawn up in a boardroom from filler and leftovers rather than a collab that does the most with the talent here it's not bad per se i like the groove but it sure as hell is not good and it's certainly disposable. So yeah, that ends the week on a bit of a downer, but it's not the worst. That's going to Heartbroken by Diplo, Jesse, Murph, and Polo G, and Equal Dirt by Rilo Rodriguez as a dishonorable mention, because I cannot imagine any place where I want to ever revisit that song. Now, Best of the Week's actually pretty straightforward. White Horse by Chris Stapleton, that's gonna run away with the top spot. Honorable mention, though... I'm gonna go with a tie for I'm Just Ken by Ryan Gosling and Cool With You by New Jeans. See, I can span the fandom divide. We should all be good here. Unfortunately, next week, we're probably gonna have the album bomb from Travis Scott, probably one from Post Malone as well. We will have to see, and hopefully we'll not be as late. Until then, I'm Mark. You're watching Billboard Breakdown, affiliated with Spectrum Pulse, and I'll see you next time.